half of Americans are struggling right now to make their house payment. According to this study by real estate brokerage firm Redfin, 49% of Americans are struggling and making sacrifices to make their monthly housing payments. Uh, some of those sacrifices include skipping vacations and working extra hours. Others are more serious, like skipping meals and medical treatments, selling belongings, and dipping into retirement savings. The study found a surprising number of millennials who are already dipping into their retirement savings. Of those who are struggling, 20% say they've borrowed money from family or friends to help get by. Now, someone who bought their home a few years ago may not be struggling as much because mortgage rates were more like 3% back then, but more recent home buyers are dealing with mortgage rates around 7%. Still, renters may be struggling the most. People dealing with increasing rent prices are still watching those payments go up. According to the Consumer Price Index, uh, rent prices started this year nearly 6% higher than a year before, and you know, most of us didn't see a 6% raise year after year. Uh, this is some hope, there is some hope among economists that the Federal Reserve could cut interest rates in June potentially. But according to this report, again, the average American household earns about $30,000 less than what's needed to afford the median priced home, and total credit card debt topped $1 trillion in the U.S. for the first time last year. My coworker saw my bank account the other day and it said $25 and we don't get paid for another like two weeks. And he was like, how are you surviving? Like, how do you even live off $25? I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you really want to know how I budget and save. I sleep. Literally, you have to have no obligations. Just sleep. Because if you're sleeping, you can't be spending money. Period. I'm just gonna say this and I'm leaving it alone. If Don Lemon can lose his job, so can you. Statistically, three in four millennials, that's ages 27 to 42, I believe, are living paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck means when you get paid, all your money is spent and you struggle or figure it out until the next paycheck. How many of y'all are currently do that? doing that and you can be honest if you're doing that you can absolutely be honest you can matter of fact you can be honest in my dms you can actually write me and say hey girl that's me i will be teaching a budgeting class this summer on june 8th the registration link is in my bio if you're one of the many people the three and four the 73 percent of millennials who is currently living paycheck to paycheck i guarantee you you're not following the budget I can bet my bottom dollar that you're not following the budget. And if you are following a budget, it's not realistic. You're going based off of hopes, wishes, dreams, and other foolishness that you should not be doing. So in my class, you're going to be learning the tips and tricks that I use to get my current monthly clients out of debt. Okay? I can't wait to see you there. Oh, I'm going to leave y'all with this last thought. If you lose your job tomorrow, what are you going to do? Can somebody explain to me in crayon eating terms why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live? And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, work 90 hours a week. That's not the goal, guys. That's not. That should not be our standard. I'm so... I am so fucking tired of people being complacent with this uniparty, both of them fucking us over. I, when my parents were my age, they both made less than half of what I make and they lived alone. I cannot afford to live anywhere alone. A one bedroom apartment, $1,800. Two bedroom apartment, $2,200. Who the fuck? can afford that. It is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now, but I know so many people are struggling. And do not get me started on what my grandparents were doing. They, $3,000 house, and yes, I understand inflation and all of the bullshit that they have been pulling with the Fed. Why are we allowing it? Why? And then, I clock out of my shift. I am tired. I have to go home. And I check the news. Another 60 fucking billion to a country nobody can point out on a map. What are we doing? Why, 
where has the plot gone? We have lost it, folks. We have fucking lost it. The American dream is dead. It is over. Gone and forgotten. But I'll tell you exactly why you're struggling, sir. You trying to make it sound like you're making a lot of money because by saying that you make three times the federal minimum wage. The federal minimum wage is only $7.25. So you're probably making about $22 per hour. That's not a lot of money today. You should not be trying to survive off of $22 an hour, even if it's just yourself. You can't do it. Stop worrying about how the government spends your money that you don't even see. Stop worrying about how your parents live. Stop worrying about the prices that were that they were before. You have bigger issues going on today. I know a lot of people right now are struggling, but instead of you going home to check the news, how about you go home, go on the computer, and maybe start like a small business or something, and stop complaining about your situation while doing nothing to change it. The prices of things are not going to go down, ever no matter who you vote for at this point. Inflation right now is at like a 3%, which is exactly where the Fed wants it to be, and that's good, okay? The only way you're gonna see prices of goods go down is if we have a deflation. And if that happens, that means the economy is doing terribly and we're in dire troubles. The economy is doing well. Inflation is low. The prices of things are high because of corporate greed because inflation's at like a three percent fed should be dropping the interest rates come september that's definitely a good thing for sure especially if you're looking to buy a house but the only way you're going to see more money in your pocket is higher wages that's it because the prices of things the prices of goods the prices of food they're never going down again what we have is what we have we just might have a slightly less increase now that inflation is at a three percent corporations are basically like oh you use this product on a regular basis. You need this product, right? So we're going to charge you double now because we can. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to make this product at home yourself? You're going to start a farm? You're going to grow your own food? You're going to slaughter your own animals? You're not going to do that. We can charge whatever the heck we want. And they did. And they're getting away with it because nobody can stop them. No president can stop them. Because again, this is a worldwide issue. This is not just U.S. based. This is corporate greed globally, everywhere, and it's terrible. What are we doing? I got paid yesterday, paid my bills, had about maybe 500 for two weeks, went and got groceries today. I'm about 100 for the next two weeks to cover gas. Any groceries that I forgot, because we all forget what's on our list. I just want to know, how's everyone doing it? I order groceries online, like for pickup, because if I go through the store, I end up buying more than what I actually need. And so, I couldn't help but notice today, when I was ordering from Aldi, the price of eggs at Aldi went up half it doubled uh last time that i was shopping for eggs they were a dollar 95 today they were four dollars and 19 cents <laughs> what's everyone doing what's everyone doing i was so sick this week that i didn't eat dinner and my kids were fed <laughs> Junk. I mean, not junk, junk, but, you know, mac and cheese, ramen noodles. Because my husband was the one doing the cooking. We didn't even have to buy a lot of stuff. How are you all surviving? Because I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of prices the way they are. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I'm tired of struggling. And you know what? I don't even have to buy eggs. That's not even the point of this video. My mother-in-law luckily has chickens and she gives us plenty of eggs. The point of this video is everything is going up. Everything. Milk is over $3 a gallon. 
I'm buying cheap food for dinners. Our food isn't even good quality anymore. Like, what the hell are we paying for? Sorry, I'm frustrated. I just want to know what everyone's doing to afford the inflation that the government says is not happening. Because my bank account says otherwise. And I'm seeing a lot of people on here saying the same thing. So if you're anything like me, just a normal person with a normal job in this shit-ass economy that can't afford anything these days except your bare necessities, then you've slacked on paying some of your bills. And that's okay. This is a no-judgment zone because I haven't paid all my bills either. And I'm really slacking, especially on my credit card bills. And I'm going to keep it real. I don't give a shit about shit I bought last year or six months ago or when I swiped the credit card. I don't fucking care. Thanks for letting me have that stuff. I don't have the money to pay you back right now. So I used to be really religious with this. Like I would send a set amount of money each month and just auto pay the credit card so it would keep my balance down, you know, so that I didn't fall behind. Well, about seven months ago, I took it off auto pay. And for about six months religiously now, like every day, multiple times a day, they're calling to get their money. We all got a job to do. And I know that you're tired of dialing my fucking number and I'm not picking up the phone. <laughs> so I accidentally answered one of their calls in the car the other day. Uh, my car hooks to my phone. So if you hit a button on the steering wheel, then it automatically answers. And it was Teresa from, you know, Credit One or Capital, one of those that I that I have. And she goes, hi, this is Teresa. And I'm calling for Brandy and from the, the credit card service. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to answer this phone call. Like, I'm really sorry about that. I don't have your money. Like, I, that's why I don't answer the phone or the emails that you sent me. And she, this bitch, she goes, well, we're like two steps away from sending you to collections. And that's really going to affect your credit. Teresa, do you not know that also not paying your credit card bill plummets your fucking credit? You might as well take my credit score out back and fucking put it out of its misery, Teresa. Do you also realize that right now my credit score means absolute fuck all nothing to me? Like, do I look like I'm buying a house? Do I look like I'm buying a car? Does it look like I can afford to buy anything ever again? Teresa, I'm going to save us both the time here. Just send it to collections now because between now and next month when you keep trying to call me, nothing's going to change. Nothing. So sorry about that, but thanks for all the stuff I bought on the credit card. I don't know what to tell you, and it's going to sit in collections too. I really, like, food, house payment, car payment, insurance, medicine, clothes, bare necessities. That's all I got the money for right now. Everything else, I could care fucking less. If you want to throw, I've been in collections my whole fucking life, Teresa. Set it to collections. And she, she just hung up on me. I don't, I don't, I don't think she had a pleasant time talking to me and that's okay. That That's fine. I was heading into the grocery store today and I was just like stressing over the fact that I was going to have to spend like $80 on groceries, right? Cause that's a lot of money to spend for one person for one week of food. Um, you know, theoretically it really shouldn't cost more than $50 for one person for a week. Um, but it's just impossible. And I was stressing cause I really didn't want to spend $80 on groceries for one week. Um, and so I was just like irritated about that. And I was trying to give myself a pep talk, like it'll be okay, it'll be fine. Like it's not gonna be a big deal. And I'm so relieved to announce that after, you know, grocery shopping exclusively store brand stuff and only buying two bags worth of groceries, I spent $116 for the week for one person. <laughs> now $80 a week for groceries is a lot for someone to be spending when you're supposed to be struggling to eat. You know, people who struggle to eat don't spend fifty, don't spend eighty dollars to buy groceries. I could go to shop right now, buy me a loaf of bread, peanut butter, some jelly, eggs, pancake mix, some syrup, some sausages, some rice, some beans, and make that last two weeks. And that's gonna cost me less than fifty dollars. Like I will eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day if I was really as broke as this guy says that he is. No joke. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like button, subscribe to the channel, do all that useless stuff. We'll see y'all next time.